ladies and gentlemen, I'm Seth Chapla, and this is How to Not Suck a Guitar, Volume 1. So, basically what this is going to be is a series of short videos that talk about really general concepts on guitar and how they're applied, both for the beginner and the advanced player. So, any of these things are just really basically good habits that um, will set you up to succeed in the music world. Uh, so today is what I think is the most important part of playing guitar in terms of technique. And that's a concept called economy of motion. So if you learn this right off the bat, if you learn how to pick efficiently, if you learn how to use your left hand efficiently, you're going to be set up to succeed uh, down the road and you won't have to relearn something. Uh, big thing with muscle memory is if you do something wrong over and over again, you're training yourself to make a mistake. So the idea with economy of motion is you want to move with the right hand, you want to move the pick through the string as little as possible uh, in, in order to be able to play faster. And the same deal applies to the left hand where you want to keep your fingers as close to the strings so that you don't spend this extra time coming back down. So I'm going to show you a couple things about the right hand and then I'll show you the left hand. So the first thing is really, if you played a little bit of guitar, you know alternate picking, you know the difference between a downstroke and an upstroke. I'll explain that real quick. So a downstroke is just playing down through the string, right? An upstroke is playing up through the string. Now, when you travel down through the string, you don't want to go too far past it especially if the next note you're gonna play is on that same string. If you, if you travel too far through, then you have more time to come back and it's gonna slow you down. So the idea here is as you're picking, and I'll do a cutaway here, you wanna just go down just far enough to get through the string and then come up just far enough. So here we go. Right, and this is kind of a flat picking technique. I'm just using the pick flat through the string. Right? You can see really small movement, barely traveling through. And that's how you kind of pull off some, some of that faster sort of uh, Yngwie stuff or, um, you know, any of that really Jason Becker, any of those fast pickers. Um, so I do want to talk a little bit about how to hold the pick. Uh, there really is no right and wrong way to do it. There's a lot of different guys that play a lot of different ways. Um, you look at a guy like Eddie Van Halen and he kind of goes from the wrist. He's doing this. Uh, you look at Ingve, who I think is has perfect form as a player. Uh, he has a kind of a closed fist and he doesn't even look like he's moving. He's, he's just really in close. Um, there's other guys that do crazy stuff like Marty Friedman. You'll see him kind of come from underneath. I can't really do it, but uh, he's crazy fast. He's a crazy good player. Um, so that's obviously something that works for him. Also, uh, I see a guy like uh, Michelangelo Batio. He plays super weird. He's kind of like this. He comes down on the string from the top. Um, and that allows him to make the, the really small movements. But that's just basically the idea is find a way that's comfortable for your hand uh, or your wrist or even from your elbow. Like a lot of times when I tremolo pick, um, which is even a little bit of a faster technique where you kind of roll the pick sideways, I move from the elbow. So really it's important to just find something that's comfortable for you that you know isn't going to cause you any sort of uh, stress. And if it doesn't feel right, then maybe try some, some other things. But the big deal is just going down and up and trying to travel through the string as little as you possibly can. Um, so you can do things like this. sort of alternate picking. I'll slow that down a little bit.
Right? Now, I'm not necessarily the fastest picker. Uh, I'm more of like a legato guy, um, which is something we'll talk about in a different video. But that's the general concept here. Now, another, uh, another concept of economy of motion uh, in terms of the right hand is directional picking as you go across strings. So that's, you know, alternate picking, I think, is the fastest way to move around on one string. Uh, but that's not always how this works, right? You typically have to go across the strings in order to play licks. So the idea here is that when an object is in motion, you just let it continue in motion. So something as simple as a strum, you're just continuing that pick through the strings. Now, if I was to arpeggiate something like in a like in a just arpeggiate that E major chord, right? And I could come down on a, like A minor. So that's just kind of the idea. I'm angling my pick a little bit as I travel through. Um, I'm angling it up here. I'll do a little cutaway for you. Right? And I angle it down and then I angle it up um, as I'm coming back up. So another concept of economy of motion with the right hand is a thing called sweep picking. And basically this is just a super advanced version of arpeggios. Um, now with an arpeggio you would kind of let things ring. Typically if you're just arpeggioing in a chord you hear that a lot. Um, in this case we're going to kind of mute strings after we play them. And it's just going to make a really fast flurry of notes. So I'm going to play you guys. I'm not the greatest sweet picker. Uh, if you really want to see somebody who's amazing, go look at a guy like Frank Gambali, who's just stupid good at what he calls economy picking, sweet picking, it's the same thing. Um, but I came up with this kind of cool little sh cool little riff based off a really common shape, which is the minor pentatonic scale. And it's using three note groupings, you know, three string groupings, I should say, five note groupings on three strings, uh, so that you aren't having to eclipse the whole neck all at once. So here goes. Right? Now it's, it's a pretty simple concept. Um, basically, I'm just doing the same thing I would with arpeggio and chord. I'm traveling through the string. In this case, I'm doing two notes on the first string. So I'm going up, down, down, and then I'm doing a hammer on on that one. Right, and that's kind of what I think is the most important part of that shape. Um, so up, down, up, down, up, down. Right, and that's with the extensions up here. Um, so that's the basic principle of sweet picking, uh, and you know it's an advanced technique, but it benefits beginning players to practice it slow. Uh, and whenever you're practicing, uh, try to practice with a metronome, especially when you're starting out. Basically, a metronome is going to keep really solid time for you, and it's also going to allow you the ability to kind of click up a couple notches when you feel comfortable with something. So what I like to do is either the rule of fives or the rule of tens. Uh, where you play something five times at a speed, then you speed it up. Or you play something something ten times, however many it takes for you to sort of absorb it, right? And the principle there is that you're playing it slow enough to play it perfect. Uh, that's really important because the more times you play something wrong, the more times you're training, you're basically training your muscle memory to make a mistake. So you really don't want to do that. You want to try to play it perfectly. Um, what I would do is I would, I would, with my students, I would just watch them play something. And if they played it wrong, I wouldn't count it towards their total of 10. And until they got 10 right, we wouldn't move to a new speed. So that's kind of the idea there. Uh, and that applies to everything on guitar, all practicing. 
and just make sure that you're paying attention to how far that pick goes through that string. And that's really going to come in handy later. If you're kind of coming off, if you're coming up or whatever, that distance is going to cause you problems when you try to speed up. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about left hand. And this is the exact same principle. It's a little bit simpler, I think, to conceptualize. And that is that when you play something, you don't want to take your fingers way off the frets when you're done, right? You want to keep them in the position and really close so that you don't have to worry about moving that huge distance to come back down. Now, most guys, everybody I've seen, they, they kind of have a pinky that flies off, even Ingbe. And Ingbe is one of the fastest players out there. Um, but, you know, just try to keep those fingers as close as you can to the frets. So if you notice when I'm playing this same speed picking, like, I'm trying to keep them really close. Right? So that's kind of the principle there. Um, you just need to keep them in close. That's going to help you too when you start doing like a legato stuff. You just want to keep your fingers in as close as you can to the frets. So a good way to exercise that is just to play up and down for you beginners out there. Just play all the fingers. And just see how close you, see how close you can keep them. And notice I'm not even really taking these ones off down here because as I play a fret higher, I don't have to worry about these still touching the strings. So even if they're just still there touching the string, that's as, that's as close as I can go without playing that fret. Right? So that's a good exercise and you can mix your fingers up. The biggest thing is trying to get that pinky down. Everybody has trouble. It's just kind of the way the mechanics of the hand work. Um, also, as you're doing this, you kind of want to use your fingers like a crab claw, I would say. You don't want to be closed in on the back of the neck like this. This is going to slow you down. I can even feel a strain from that. Um, so you really just want to use this, this thumb as a clamp. And sometimes if you're up here and you're bending or something, you'll want to bring the thumb over. But that's because you're using it to pull up, right? But in this case, if you're just playing a fast speed picking lick, you want to use your thumb like a clamp, um, sort of parallel with your first finger. Um, one other thing I want to talk about, I'll go back to the right hand for a minute, uh, is really just a single string technique that you can move around and it's called tremolo picking. Um, it's pretty simple really when you when you get the hang of it and it's a good way to sound sort of fast without having to know um, a ton of you know, how to memorize some big complicated lick you can just kind of know something on one string and use that and that is to angle the pick uh, so the big deal with tremolo picking that tends to come up is the pick gets caught on the string if you're just kind of flat picking through the string I just can't go that fast. Now, if you angle the pick and you let the pick roll over the string, you'll get a slightly different sound, but you're gonna you're gonna be able to move through that string way more smoothly. So let's look at how that works. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, you do it on any string. It's kind of like a Dick Dale thing. Um, so yeah, that's the idea with that. Uh, there's you know other ways guys achieve that. Like I said, uh, uh, Eddie Van Halen does kind of a fanning thing, and he uses a thinner pick. I've noticed Joe Satriani does the same thing where he's kind of fanning like that. Um, so lots of ways to do it. I like to angle my pick because I like using a, a really thick pick. So it really just depends on your preference. Uh, and if you're playing heavier styles, a thicker pick 
more often than not is a good choice because you can get like really solid chunky notes but that's by no means a rule uh just kind of a general trend uh yeah so that's it for economy of motion today uh i'll be back next time with uh something different all right thanks a lot guys